Greetings, sir and sirette, and welcome back to From the Depths with me, Alathrix. And of course, welcome back to the adventure series where today we are currently in a blue zone, which means there are no enemies, nothing can spawn here except for red portals, and we are completely safe to do what we wish. And what I want to do today is fix up the craft. In fact, it's going to be a massive overhaul of pretty much everything. So the reason for this is although I've been having loads and loads of fun using this craft and building it up layer after layer after layer, I've also been building it inefficiently the whole way through just because we've been rushed and the inefficiencies have started to get really on my nerves. The rail guns are just... Well, they're less than ideally made, the Partal Cannon no longer really serves much of a purpose, I hardly ever use it, and the missiles are just too short range. So even the basic weapon systems just aren't what I want them to be anymore. On top of that, the internal armour is all over the place, we have way too many RTGs which clearly cannot support us anymore, there's just loads we need to do. Now I do actually kind of like how it looks, except for of course the lack of a proper superstructure. I like how the ship looks, but I am also tempted to remove its capability to fly. That sounds weird, but the reason is we're not really travelling all that much anymore, we're not really running away. If something wants to kill us, it will kill us. There's no running away from it, especially with some of these Scarlet Dawn godlies, which hopefully I will see soon. And apparently, all the Titans is actually not intentional, and eventually that's going to be fixed, so we have a higher variety of enemies more often. At the moment, they're spawning somewhere between 10 and 20 times more than they should, according to my sources, so that is really annoying. So with that... This is going to be a long video to record, and it's going to be a lot of effort. But hopefully, the results will be worth it. So, be right back once I've started making some headway. Well, there goes the two sides. It's amazing how it breaks apart so slowly, and so sadly. Oh, that's going to mess up our altitude, I just realised. Yeah, this ship doesn't really float properly, so it uses blades on the inside and outside to even keep it in the water. But I think there's still enough on the inside, right? Since in this mode, I can't actually hold the vehicle using caps lock. The sides were far cheaper than I remember as well. Those messages on the left-hand side of the screen are far too subtle. Originally, I didn't want to use the sandbox mode at all, purely because it's not part of the adventure mode, but since I'm still building everything in the blue mode, I'm not going to edit anything in the sandbox mode, I just want to do a quick test. So here we are in the sandbox mode. We're currently about four kilometers away from this target. I've just put down a brand new turret, and I'm hoping it's accurate enough to actually hit where I want it to hit. Also, the shell's now far larger, higher gauge, but just fire slower. So, well, with less fire rate anyway. Aiming there. Perfect. Yep, that's going to get the, the job done just fine. So these shells do about 50,000 damage, and they have an armor penetration value almost in the hundreds. It should go through pretty much anything except for stacked heavy armor. And it's actually accurate. Went straight through. Lovely. Okay, how about firing a few in a row? Now, there is going to be some inaccuracy, because right now the ship isn't stable, so it's moving all around. But let's say I wanted to go through here. So that's three shots. All reasonably in the same area, not perfectly accurate. Now the recoil shouldn't be a problem at all. I've checked how much the recoil absorption recharges per second, and it's more than even if I hold down the fire button. So that's more probably because of the ship's movements and a few other factors, like the fact it's so far away. There is always going to be some inaccuracy. It's less than one degree of inaccuracy, but over such long distances that is still going to add up. I could make it more accurate by turning some of the energy of the railgun into extra accuracy, or I could add the fins at the back, there's actually quite a few options, or even a trace around, so it fires a normal round, fires a trace around, fires a normal round, that way the accuracy is increased as well. But yeah, that's going to be doing just fine. I mean, look at that, that's insane, just straight through. Now, admittedly, this is wooden armour, but it's still so cool to see. You can see exactly where it went, and it went out the other side. Also, I can't talk at the moment. My sleep patterns are getting all over the place again at the moment, and it is affecting my speech to no end, but that is so cool. 
Yep, I think I'll stick with these shells for now. We can always move to impact. With how much damage they do, it's probably just going to remove a whole chunk of armor. But I think for now, we'll stick with this. Back to the adventure mode. Okay, working on the front gun now. Not quite sure what we're going to do in the middle, but here we are. Lovely. So that is much more accurate than the old version. It fires about the same rate, although it has only one barrel. It fires faster than the old two-barrel version. It will eventually become less accurate. It doesn't quite have the recoil suppression reload that it needs to continually fire at max accuracy, but it will stay there for the most part. So, any second now it should... There we go, a little bit less accurate. It's going to be quite hard to see in the video, really, but... Very slightly there at the end, they did start to deviate, but in comparison to the old one, much better. Okay, so that's our firepower at the moment. We have the rapid fire railgun at the front and the much larger railgun in the center. I don't know what I'm going to put here, though. This is where the partial cannon once was, and yeah, don't know what I'm going to be replacing it with. At the back, I'm most likely going to put another rapid-fire railgun, so essentially I'm going to copy and paste the one from the front, back where the old railgun was here. The missiles are probably going to stay, though I'm going to move them. I have removed the two side missile sections because, honestly, we just didn't get any use out of them anymore. If we're going to have missiles, they're going to have to be long-range, so they're going to be large missiles, and that's probably going to be it. We do have all this space to play with, so we could just move them away from the core there. Okay, turns out I need to rethink my roll control because, well, I became a little bit dependent on the massive blades on the side. We do have the tiny little blades here, but these are only one deep at the moment, so yeah, we need to change that. Going to be extending all the superstructure anyway. The problem is the center of mass has just went up as well, so we're going to need to do some work with that. Oh, well, apparently we can still become a sub, though, so that's nice. So we do still have an escape plan if everything goes horribly wrong. We just can't fly anymore. Actually, I wonder what would happen if I did try to fly. So, now turning on flight controls. Really doubt this is going to work. We do have the internal blinds. And we do have the pushes at the bottom. No, it's just going to put us higher in the water, that's all. Well, it tried. Nothing too weird going on at the moment, so what we're doing right now is we're using Mimics here rather than actual windows, that way they're not too much of a weak point, and then we have this area here which is going to act as an extra bit of the safe zone, though really this is now being reinforced with heavy armour, heavy armour on the inside, it should be very well protected for the Avatar, which is all well and good, since I'm probably going to stay now mostly in third person. I was going to add a proper command bridge, a proper command tower and everything as well, a comms tower and loads of other stuff, but I think I'm going to leave it quite flat at the moment. There's just no real need for it, and I don't have unlimited time at the moment. I am finding it a bit difficult to record just because the fatigue is killing me, but I really do want it to have at least some kind of superstructure, so I am armoring up a lot more. Still not sure what to put here. I am considering a smaller railgun, which uses things like the, what's it called, the disruptor rounds, and that way we can turn off shields when we fire all of our weapons at the same target. We just need to make sure it's as accurate as the other guns, otherwise, well, we're going to hit all over the place and not the shield we're currently aiming at. So with that, let's continue. Oh yeah, I've also now removed the missiles. Mostly. Well, it turns out the Disruptor Conduits don't act exactly how I remember them. So, a long time ago, when I last used one of these, which was a very long time ago, if I recall correctly, which I could be completely wrong here, the Disruptor Conduit essentially did damage to the shield block itself. So, after a few hits, the block itself inside the enemy ship would be destroyed, and then the shield would simply not be there. But instead, it now scrambles shields it passes through, reducing their effective strength. Which is really interesting. So here we have the fact that it stacks, which is interesting as well. And if I have it as a 500mm, which I probably won't because this is a weird setup, I can reduce it down to 25% per shell. So if I have a smaller one, perhaps, which fires loads of these, maybe that would be the best. Or perhaps just a couple of very large shells, probably not just a 1 meter length shell like this, but still. That does seem pretty good, because we have had some serious problems with things like the Titans, where I finally get a good hit, and then my shell simply bounces away into space. Probably hitting some poor alien in the crotch. 
back in the sandbox mode briefly, just to test out the disruptors. Now, there's a good chance we might not need purely disruptors on this small railgun. So we could have maybe half disruptor and half just regular shells. We'll see how it goes. Now, there's a very strong shield here, which normally deflects a lot of my shells. So, let's see what happens. Okay. Wow. Okay, we instantly went through and took out the main section. That lag, sadly, is because this item is completely covered in lights. Well, that went a lot faster than usual. So, very good to know. And, of course, the disruptors themselves are still EMP. They will do some EMP damage, though less than a missile or something else we're using. Adding a little bit of a window section here into the main safe room. So what we've got is just one mimic on the very outside, which is a window block, and then just glass blocks behind it so we can actually see through it. The red light is coming from one of our many, many lights somewhere in the craft, which I believe is actually directly underneath us, so that needs to be fixed in a second. A new entrance way at the front, so we can access pretty much anywhere nice and quickly. And we even have some ladders, which I think should actually work for once. So let's see. And by ladders, I mean stairs. Yep, it works. It's a little bit, um, choppy, but yep, we get to the top, so that's fine. Then we have the top room, which definitely needs more armor on the inside and things to be cleared up. I'm honestly not focusing that much on looks. As you can probably tell by the turrets, these things have been sort of rushed because I am really running out of time already because these things had to be built from scratch, which took a few hours because I'm still learning the advanced cannons. But they are much better than the old versions at least, just better weapons in general. Remember when I removed the missiles here saying I'd place them somewhere else? Well, now I'm thinking I'm going to replace them exactly where they were, just higher up. The reason is we can have a room here, which is attached here to here. And yes, these are both fully accessible at the moment. And then we can have glass around them so we can look at the pretty missiles as they fire, which I think will be fun. If you've got missiles, you may as well show them off. That's what my grandfather always used to say to me. Okay, the new missiles are installed. These things are far bigger than the old versions. They are, of course, large missiles as well, as you might expect. They do a lot of damage and should survive for many, many, many kilometers. So even if a Titan spawns off in the distance so we can hardly see it, these things should be able to reach it. So let's do a quick test versus the Bulwark. Let's see if they can get through its munition defense system, since it does have a pretty good one, I think. It's been a while. Or it could just not defend itself at all. Oh my word. Well. There's a few holes in you, mister. I have no idea what that voice was. I think I was possessed briefly. That always happens on a Tuesday. Of course the best thing is it's not actually Tuesday right now. Now testing out Fragment. That's pretty nice too, but less exploding. Now in theory, that should do more damage than the explosive based on the stats, but... Again, explosives just make everything better. Now testing out EMP missiles. In theory, these can do 90,000 EMP damage each. They didn't. But that's a lot of stuff. Uh, heavy armor blocked most of it. Okay. Guess the Bulwark really isn't the best target for this. And that kind of shows, though, why I'm not going to be using them. I am going to be using them purely for explosive. Now, the reason why I want to use these types of missiles, even though they are so, so expensive, is just because they are there purely for that initial strike. After they fire once, I'm not going to use them again unless the fight goes on for a very, very, very long time. 
They are extremely long range, so they can counter pretty much any distance, which is lovely. And they should be able to soak up a lot of damage from anti-munition systems, and thus drain the enemy's power. If they do get through, then it's a good initial burst. That's going to be about it. Now, this really needs to be heavy armor, so what I'm going to do is bring this up. So, regular metal, then heavy armor behind it. And then we make our little viewing room so we can see the weapons. Okay. Sure, the ship might be ugly, but you know what? It has a charm of its own. So let's see if we can actually get to the missile section by moving there normally. You can just sort of parkour up here if you wish to. Did I really just forget to add a section there? Well, still works. Oh, that truly brings a tear to my bloodshot sickly eyes. Lovely. We're a very normal ship, you know? Full of normal things for normal people. What a lovely day. Well, I would like to just keep on adding stuff over and over again and actually making it look a bit better, but I am really running out of time at this point, and we are also running out of resource. What I would like to do now is just to get into some fights to test out the railguns and make sure everything is working correctly. There's likely to be a few problems here and there, but nothing we can't solve with a few tests and a little bit of destruction. You know, the two normal things. In life. Now, one thing I haven't really mentioned, because it's not the most interesting thing, is I have also worked on the internal armor of this thing. It now has some space armor, and it has lots of heavy armor, especially stacked around areas which are important. Things like the heartstone, the ammunition, the, ra the rare resources, and <laughs> the raw resources. Everything like that is being protected. Rare resources. Been playing Stellaris a lot recently. So I've been doing a few tests with the missiles. That looked really close. Anyway, and it turns out the range of them is 6.5 kilometers. We could make it more long range, or we could potentially make it a bit stronger. But I really do like the fact they are that long range, because it means they're going to be hitting pretty much anything, no matter where they spawn. Right now, we're just going in circles, just set up a simple control block. So we're just circling an area until something shows itself, so we can test out the weapons. I have a feeling like next video is going to be our last, because we're close to the final state now. There's not much more really I want to do with the craft, I just want to find some of the other serious godlies and test this ship against them. That's really just about it. I, I really am looking forward to seeing things like the Singularity, and I think there's a new Scarlet Dawn ship, I can't remember the name of it, which is really powerful as well. I'm thinking they're going to kill us, just putting it out there. I don't think we're going to win, but I really want to see just how well it does. Can we do some damage to it? How good are these railguns in the end game? I would like to see how it fares. And of course, still, the Megalodon. Because big ship versus big ship equals big fun. Just been going around in circles for a while now, nothing new to report. Though the one thing I have done is finally move my chair a little bit, because before it was in a direct line with this door here. So, although it's a bit difficult to do, if an enemy got a really good shot, especially with something with a little bit of arm penetration, it would go straight through its door, straight through my head. Which, ultimately, isn't what I really want to see happen. Naturally, the first enemy was a Titan. Little bit of editing here on the EMP cannon, so now it should never stop being accurate. And it fires slightly faster. There we are, didn't cost all that much. Essentially all I really did was add an extra section of the recoil suppressors, and then I did one more line of autoloaders. And considering that was all made possible thanks to that Titan, I choose to believe it's a tree made of Titan flesh. That makes three titans so far. Thankfully we are killing them way faster than before. Although once they get underwater they are just as annoying as usual. And for reference, this one was over five kilometers away. And even though it's underwater, you can see now we are way more accurate. Rather than just going absolutely everywhere with our shells, it's only a slight deviation. 
So the real question is, is it worth sacrificing a bit more damage and using the rails to enhance accuracy at the cost of speed and thus kinetic damage, or perhaps add the stabilizing fins, which apparently are not the best, though I have had some mixed responses about that, so perhaps they are really good. Or we could start mixing in some tracer rounds. Essentially, once a tracer round fires, it increases the accuracy of all shells afterwards for a short while, as long as those shells are of a similar speed. What do you think, Jeremy? No, I'm not going to talk to the hand because the face isn't listening. Oh, Jeremy. Now I'm looking at it, I really don't think it is worth increasing the accuracy anymore. Right now, the smaller guns have an inaccuracy value of 0 0.1. The, as that is 0 0.1 degrees. The energy weapon here has 1.1. The main gun has 0 0.9. So it is incredibly accurate. It's just the range we're firing at. And hopefully, versus a larger target, we'll be able to get closer to them, and then it'll be less of a problem. So I do need the damage for that. It makes sense, really. Over such ridiculous distances, we're going to miss a few shells. And right now, though, it is so compact, it's okay. Most of the shells are missing purely because of their speed. It still takes three or four seconds to get to the target, and by then, they've moved. And if they're not moving in a very uniform way, or suddenly change course, it causes the shells to veer off. Well, the shells still go in the same direction, but you get the idea. It doesn't hit them in the face. It might hit them in the leg by mistake. Really should focus on the body right now, because although look at how many blocks were just melting away, it does heal to an insane level. Wait, if I'm getting resources for dealing damage, why don't I just keep on firing? Because I've already knocked out its weapon. As you can see, if one of the armor penetrating shells hits the um, arm, it just goes away. So if I just keep on firing, I'm just going to keep on getting more and more resource, because it's healing. Now, the base doesn't have unlimited resources by any means, but still. I'm just going to carry on doing this for a while. I can't even see my ship on the horizon. I really do wish there was a setting to decide how close enemies spawn. That's something I would add personally. Now, adding things a lot, it does change how the game works, the adventure mode. It's meant to be a challenge, and it forces you to, well, have a challenge by not allowing you to do certain things. But I would like that one setting. That's the one thing I would like to add. Wow, it's so rare to actually destroy the torso while it's still... Oh, no, no, it's not healing anymore. That could be because it's too damaged, though, and just melting away. Not bobbing so much. Yeah, once the first EMP round goes through, the shields are just almost completely nullified, which is so nice. Still a few bounces, though. I wonder how long that nullification actually lasts. Now, the railgun with the EMP shells is firing at 150 rounds per minute. So it's firing a lot of them, just... yeah. It's all about the small movements, that's what causes a lot of the shells to miss. I think I am going to leave them like this. Again, I'm just waffling about the same thing over and over again. I do apologise when you're doing the same actions so many times for hours. You start to really, not really, really, really have things to really say. My sanity is slipping away. <laughs> Missiles go boom. The Abyss. Over a million resources in a ship, and lots and lots of very nasty lasers, though once again, at very extreme ranges. Oh, and very, very loud as well, apparently. Just going for the center of mass here, just because at this range I wouldn't really be able to see the turrets. Just going for dead center. Really, I'd like to go for that back section there, since I feel like all the important stuff is probably in there. Oh, so it's a particle cannon. Good to know. Oh, and it is AI dead. Apparently I sniped its AI. Yeah, the power armor penetrating shots there just must have gone right through. Ooh, through heavy armor as well. Well. That was a very quick fight. Still 
hating things which are so low in the water like this. <laughs> Explosions. How did you bounce? Also, I keep on saying center of mass for some reason, when what I actually mean is just the center of the craft in terms of its visuals. Because that's not me what I aim for if I can't really see the target properly. And it actually did a fair amount of damage. It cost us, yeah, it cost us more than we got from damaging it that time. But that was over very quickly. Well, since we got extra resources and I only wanted enough to repair the majority of the craft, well, the important things if it got damaged, I have now went ahead and improved the two smaller railguns, so now that their recoil will always be regenerating faster than it's being used up the recoil absorption, which means we'll have less random stray shots. These two were being perfectly accurate the whole time, but these two were over time degrading. That's why the burst fire at the start looks so much more impressive than it kind of hit everywhere. Again, though, this only really applies to really long range, which does seem to be that's what the game has slowly degraded into. Just let me find one rare enemy, please. I want to test these things out against something which isn't the Titan. Then, in the next episode, we won't stop until we find specific targets, or at least enough rare non-Titans that I've fully tested out this vehicle. And that will likely be the last video. At least this season. Maybe I'll make a new season with um, with some new rules, though the campaign should be out soon in the non-dev branch, in the stable branch, so I will be going to that as soon as I can. Oh, you look amazing! What are you? The Apollo! Those particle cannons. So yeah, it can definitely fire at us at this range, so I'm going to go ahead and return fire. Most of our shells are indeed getting through the shields, which is lovely to see. And night night. Pure armor penetrating shells aren't the most fun to watch since they just tend to go inside and do some damage, but they're definitely effective. Although apparently not the most effective, a lot of people say that I really shouldn't go with them, I should go with a lot of other options, but I just like them. Whoa, okay, we just lost a lot of armor there. What are you? Uh, your white flyers. The judgment, perhaps? The retribution? The judgment. Is the retribution even one of the white flyer ships? It's been a long time. Did you always have such a spiky front? No, you couldn't have, because these are wedges. Not wedges. Wedges. Well. Go for the center, since you're so far away. It was leaning into that, so the shells followed that, and that, annoyingly, made most of the first few shells miss, but there we go. It has shields, but anti-shield stuff should be quite effective there. Okay, one turret's already gone, it's just kind of leaning on top. At this point, you're probably close enough we could aim, so... Oh, no, two of the guns have gone. Really should focus a little bit lower, like there. There we go. Oh, and there's the missiles, finally. Lots of heavy armor on this thing. Is that going to really continue to sink? Okay, well, that's that. The missiles did a lot of the work there. The initial few hits on us, though, were really bad. Um, one of them actually sheared off most of the armor of one of our front turrets. So what I'm hoping is we didn't actually lose a weapon there. We could have, honestly. Nope, we managed to get away with that. Okay. So I was looking back at the last bit of footage, and by the way, I took some serious internal damage there. 
loads of sections were almost completely sheared off, so... Not much damage on the outside, but apparently it hurt our insides. Now, I was looking back at the footage though, and what I noticed a lot was the corners of the front of the enemy were being damaged, and it looked like a shell had just hit the corner and destroyed just a simple triangle. But then underneath, you see all the blocks melting into the water, so I was doing loads of damage all into the internals. And I realised something. That is so bloody boring. So I think I'm going to go back to impact shells, just because I don't really care if they're more or less e effective, I want to see the damage the shells are doing, because at the moment it looks like I'm not doing much, even though I clearly am. These have 8 meter length shells, and they're at 500 mil for instance. Titan? Titan. Okay, I'll change the shells right after this fight. What a weird cap size. And of course, another Titan. Well, aren't you a cute thing? As you can probably tell by the sheer amount of blocks being destroyed, I have now gone back completely into impact. How much armor do you have? Look how much you're just trailing behind you. I wonder how much damage it's done to me. Getting close now to 2 million damage against the enemy. Yeah, perhaps pure armor penetration is more efficient. Because that's just all armor, but look at how much of it is coming off this thing. Also nice to see we're missing, like, no shots. Can you please break apart? What have you done to me? That's my question. All weapons are online, but oh my god, I have holes all over me. What are you? Oh, it looks like you might be going into the water. Really should have fired the missiles. I thought it was smaller than it was. Just pause for a sec. That's only 500,000 material. That thing is nasty. Remember just a hole in the front look, you can see straight through it. Now fired the missiles, though I am unsure about if they're actually going to hit, since they're not the fastest. Though they do have target prediction, so... Yeah, they'll hit. Finally! Okay, whoever designed that, you are an evil genius. That thing is brutal. Especially for its cast. I mean, it's still a big craft, but yeah. Yeah, maybe impact isn't as good as I thought it'd be. But it was a lot more fun though, wasn't it? Just constantly seeing those chunks fall off. Oh, I'm so glad I have so much armor. It hasn't even pierced. Okay, so it pierced through pretty much all of the wooden armor I had. Got through a few layers of metal here and there. Uh, did some damage to the barrels, pretty much all the barrels were damaged. On a side note, I have lowered how many re how many repair bots we have, but still. I forgot how much wooden armor we have here. Still, it does work though. Against things like lasers, which can only destroy one block at a time, just cheap spam armor can be really effective. At least that's what I found in the campaign ages ago when I was using things like the Malal's Will. Oh. Thought enemy spawned and then apparently not. Just um light shells exploding. The gun is now reattached, I believe. Excellent. And that's why you don't have anything very expensive or explosive in the turret cap itself. At least with these things, because well the turret cap is normally a lot more difficult to defend. I mean that's just like a block of solid armor as well, and that's gone straight through. Slowly repairing up. Yeah, as you can see, I have massively slowed down how fast this, this thing can heal, because 
if an enemy is doing enough damage, I, want, I do want it to be able to shear through the armor and get to the vitals of the ship. And if I have too much repair, as long as we have some material in storage, we're going to be immortal. Now, of course, that's the whole point of the adventure mode. It's an endurance battle, not just, oh, look, I won 1v1. You're meant to take advantages in fights. But still, I found that boring. So now I have, I believe, 10 repair bots. Could be a couple more, to be fair. There are some things hidden all over this craft since how it's been built. Oh, lots of lag. That sounded like a titan. Well, what do you know, it's a titan. Once again, hollow point is so much more fun to watch. Just look at that. Hello there, Judgment! Oh, look at that! The impact shells there just <laughs> crushing the armor. Annoyingly, though, it is turning the way I don't want it to turn because it wasn't quite in position for me to broadside it, so not all of my guns are currently firing. Lots of heavy armor, but even so. Okay, yeah, now in a much better position. Our missiles should be reaching fairly soon, and there they are for the death shot. What are these? Oh, are those anti-missile missiles? Yeah, I think they are. Yeah, probably will hit you now. Oh, no. Yes, I will. Love that. Just adore that. Those missiles are really overpowered, aren't they? Stupidly expensive, mind you, but yeah, they're just so nasty when they hit. But the shells are doing pretty well as well. We chunked out this section really quickly. And so we continue our journey. Actually, no, we don't. I've just looked at the time and realized I've been recording for, well, in excess of 10 hours. Yeah, maybe I should take a break. So, right now, I am going to be calling the episode. The next video will likely be our last, and it's going to be all about just hunting down the elite enemies. I've currently been in this zone now for four of those 10 hours, which means the enemies are spawning in far quicker, and we're seeing quite a lot of variety. I'll probably end the season, end the episode, by trying to find the strongest of the strongest, things like the Megalodon, things like the Singularity, and its brethren, the other godlies of the Scarlet Dawn, which I can't remember the name of off the top of my head. I know there's one other one which apparently is absolutely fearsome, so I'm really looking forward to seeing that. Overall, I think the ship now is just at a stage where we've kind of hit the peak of where I want it to be. Of course, it could have looked a lot better, and I really think we should have gone to higher difficulties a lot faster. That's completely my fault. I really underestimated... Um, the difficulty settings of each of the different zones, and that really, really messed things up. Overestimated. I overestimated the difficulty, and that's because the last time I played, I remember going into only a few red portals, and we constantly saw godlies, and that kind of stuck with me. Now it's clearly a bit more balanced, and the next time we play, we're definitely going to rush the higher difficulties a lot faster. Since we kind of arrived here already being so expensive, and we've already so much armament, we didn't really need to improve that much, which is a serious problem. At least I've learnt, though, a lot about advanced cannons, so hopefully next time I build them, they will be better. These are much better than the first version, versions, and I'm sure the third versions will be better than the second. So with that, thank you so much for watching. If you have enjoyed today's video, then of course, likes, favourites, shares, comments, all that good stuff helps out me, helps out the channel, and most importantly, shows that From the Depths is a series you wish to see continued in the future. Thank you so, so much for watching, and goodbye. I hope I wasn't too repetitive. I feel like my mind is just on a loop at the moment. A loop at the moment. A loop at the moment.